Now, if you've been around the Souls community for a little while, you're probably no stranger to the infamous one-hit KO or one-shot builds that are typically used by other content creators to complete the challenge of beating Elden Ring or beating every Remembrance boss by simply hitting them with one singular hit. And as this channel is heavily revolved around making powerful builds in Elden Ring, it's a tad weird that I actually haven't delved into the one-shot builds at all. But of course, all of that's going to change as today we're going to be taking a look at how quick you can get one of these infamous one-shot builds and use it to absolutely obliterate Morgit, which is the first boss in the game. Of course, just cheekily, make sure you hit that like button if you happen to enjoy this video. And if you're new around here, why not subscribe? We're on the way to 15,000 subscribers and we're hoping to do that by the end of the year. So if you're new around here and you like the content and you want to see more videos just like this, make sure that you're subscribed. But anyway, enough of all of that. Let's answer the question as to how quick we can make this build. Now, there are many different ways that you can make a quote-unquote one-shot build using things like intelligence builds around Comet Azure or even things like the Death's Poker, but those types of attacks are more of like a one-use kind of build to defeat an enemy because they deal multiple damage over multiple ticks rather than just actually hitting an enemy with pure damage. So for this particular video, I wanted to go with the full aesthetic as a one-shot build by using a melee weapon that is going to ultimately defeat an enemy with just one swing of it. And again, if you're fond of the Elden Ring and Souls-like community, you've probably got one weapon in your mind, and that should hopefully be the Giant Crusher. And yes, I'm aware that there are hundreds and hundreds of videos around this weapon, but we're not here for the gimmick of finding the coolest weapon. We are in fact obviously trying to to do this in the quickest time possible and this weapon simply fits that bill. So of course now that we're fixated on that weapon I then conjured up the route that I need to take in order to get all of the items and the buffs necessary in order to defeat Morgit with just one tap of the head. So I'm essentially going to throw the list of items that we need on screen for you and I will also have them on screen throughout the video as like a sort of checklist so you can watch along and take note to as and when we collect these items. But essentially other than the weapon itself we also need to pick up the smithing stones and it's regular smithing stones luckily for the giant crusher so preferably we need to get one through six to make it a plus 18. We also need to make sure that we pick up the wonder physic as well as some specific tiers that we'll pick up along the way and I will discuss them as we collect them throughout the video. The axe talisman as that's going to be the talisman that we're using where we're a new character we've only got the one talisman slot and the axe talisman is going to be one of the most beneficial ones and again I'll go into more detail later on and then we need a whole bunch of stat boosting items more specifically the incantations flame grant me strength the flame of Frenzy and also Golden Val, but more specifically with Golden Val, we're going to be picking up the Ash of War. We're also going to need to pick up a Black Dumpling Helm, as well as crafting a Blood Boil Aromatic, and then lastly, the Ash of War, the Royal Knight's Resolve. So, that was our shopping list, essentially, of all of the items that we needed for this particular build. But in order to get there, we needed to head to the Altus Plateau. So that meant that we actually needed to get the Dectus Medallion before we started anything else. So that is where our run begins. So that means that we had to head over to Fort Faroff and also Fort Hate straight off the bat. And luckily for us, on the way to Fort Hate, there's a few items that we needed to pick up, including the one, the physic, and also one of the tiers that we're going to be using to mix into that physic being the spiked cracked tier. Now this will also be working with the axe talisman because the good thing about the giant crusher is the charged heavy attack is essentially the same as the lion's claw ash of war but where it's a charged heavy we can utilize both this cracked tier and the axe talisman to boost the damage with that particular move. So that's why both of them are on the bucket list and we obviously collected them on the way to Fort Hate. And then again from there, we headed over to Kayla to get the second half of the medallion, and whilst we were there, we also headed a bit more south to go and collect ourselves the Flame Grant Me Strength incantation to again save us coming back here at a later stage. And then once I headed over to Fort Faroff and got the second half of the medallion, it was then our aim to head straight to the Altus Plateau to not only get the Giant Crusher that we needed, but also to have access to other areas that we'll need for future items. Again, 
Whilst on our way to the Grand Lift, we of course made our way back through Limgrave and more specifically through the Lernia of the Lakes. And for those of you that aren't aware, in the Lernia of the Lakes, there are multiple caves and also structures with statues in them that look a little bit like this, like a stone hut essentially throughout the entire lake where you can collect multiple smithing stones, both smithing stone 2 and also smithing stone 3. This of course is brilliant because we're going to need to collect as many smithing stones as physically possible and again more specifically on Storm Hill where the giants are residing there is a statue that can be broken by those giants that has five smithing stone ones and again just collectively throughout Limgrave and Kaelid we're going to be collecting pretty much all of our smithing stones one through four getting at least 12 of each so that we can level up the weapon to a plus 12. So just bear that in mind I'm obviously not going to show you absolutely everything I'll of course be showing certain things whilst I'm talking about it now but we are obviously exploring the caves and different areas that are available in each main location in order to get as many smithing stones as physically possible without having to purchase them and then equally as we're going to have to spend a lot of runes upgrading the giant crusher once we get it we do need to try and utilize as much rune collection as physically possible luckily for us the Lernia of the lake also has a really neat enemy residing in it being those four armed skeletons but more specifically Specifically, there's a few of them being hoisted up by like a hot air balloon that if you manage to pop that balloon whether it be with a throwing knife or any other throwing object you will then be granted with a golden rune 6 which holds 2,000 runes in it and with about six or seven of these being located within the Lake of Lernia that makes for an easy 10 to 12,000 runes straight off the bat allowing us to upgrade the weapon quite a few times. Equally as we're going through all of the main areas in the game you may have come across a few graveyards with again different runes residing in those slightly open coffins I would heavily advise also checking some of those out because especially if you're going through Kaelid or the Altus Plateau you're more than likely going to have one of two of these holding anything from a gold rune 8 to a gold rune 12 which really shouldn't go amiss especially if you're walking past those areas anyway. So that's the way that we're mainly collecting our runes and obviously our smithing stones as we're progressing whilst getting the other items. And of course, the main aim of going to Altus Plateau was to go and get the Giant Crusher, which in fact is located in this area, more specifically inside a chest at the back of one of those chariots. This one is just sitting there and actually being protected by possibly one of the most annoying enemies in the game, being the Tree Spirits. But the unique thing about this particular tree spirit is it summons in sort of out of thin air and because it does that it takes quite a while to spawn in meaning that you can literally just run up to this chest open it grab the weapon and get yourself back out of there before the enemy even knows you are there. And pretty much from this point, we're halfway through. We've got the weapon now, enough smithing stones and runes to basically upgrade it to a plus 12. Got ourselves the flame grant me strength and the axe talisman as well as the wonder physics. So really, from this point on, it was just backtracking and going to get the other items that I was yet to obtain. So with that in mind, I backtrack all the way to Storm Hill to go and defeat the guard that drops the Golden Vow Ash of War. Now the reason why we're getting the Ash of War version rather than the Incantation version is because with our character I believe we start with 8 faith at the very beginning and the Incantation version of Golden Vow requires 25 so where we're also going to be getting Flame Grant Me Strength and the Flame of the Frenzy we only need 16 faith in order to use both of those so rather than pushing it to 25 needing even more runes to level up faith for no apparent reason we might as well grab the Ash of War version of Golden Vow as that also starts stacks with flame grant me strength. Also with us being in Storm Hill we were right next to the second tier that I needed for the wonder physic being the strength not tier so now we had that to mix in with the spike crack tier and we had our wonder physic ready to go as well. I then headed further south through Limgrave making sure that I picked up the whetstone and also the flame of the frenzy incantation from the ailing village before hiking it back north to go and get the last three items necessary for this one 
shop build. Because essentially all we need to get now are smithing stones 5 through 7, the black dumpling helmet, the cookbook and the materials to make the blood boil aromatic, and then lastly the royal knight's resolve, ash of war. So on my way to the outer plateau I also helped Raya to obviously start her quest to gain access to the volcano manor, as that's going to be where we're going to farm the black dumpling helm and get the royal knight's resolve as well as some smithing stone sixes but essentially i made my way to the guest hall site of grace where there are going to be six of the first generation albinorix that drop the dumpling helm which we need to obviously farm now although there are six of these albinorix in this area each one has a 0.5 percent chance of dropping the helm that we need meaning that we've got a one in 200 chance essentially of getting this helmet and it certainly felt like those kind of odds as it took around about half an hour for me to do this. I know the timings aren't quite correct, um, obviously showing you from when I started to when I actually got it, but that's because I gave up sort of after 15-20 minutes, went on to go and collect some smithing stones, more specifically five and sixes, getting them from again other statues that you need the larger enemies in the game to open up, like the ones here in Mount Gelmir and also in some of the Altus tunnels as well. Also in my sort of like little gap in between like the two farming sessions, I went and got the Perfumer's Cookbook, more specifically the one that is in the Shaded Castle, as that is the cookbook that allows us to have the recipe to make the blood boil aromatic. Also, in the Shaded Castle, there is a Perfumer's bottle that you can pick up, so we also went and grabbed that, as you need at least one of these in order to make any perfume in the game, so yeah, you definitely need to make sure that you pick up one of those as well. But with all of that collected, and also the helm now in our possession, it was just simply off to go and get the Royal Knight's Resolve and we were essentially done with collecting all of the items that we needed. And again, in order to do that, we actually had to utilize a skip, which is something I've never done in any Dark Souls game before, like going past or skipping a certain boss arena by going out of bounds, essentially. And the boss that we had to skip for this was the Godskin boss in the Temple of Eagle in the Volcano Manor area, because we needed to get past him to then go towards the Teleport to gain access to the Rykard fight, but you can't gain access to that area without either beating this Godskin boss or obviously skipping it as we're going to show you here. Again, the timings are going to show you how bad I was at doing this skip, but like I say, bear in mind, it was the first time ever doing this glitch, so it took me again around about half an hour, 40 minutes to essentially get round the building and up this cliff face or rock to then have access to the back end of the volcano manor to open up the stone sword key door, traverse down those cages and get myself the royal knight's resolve. So essentially there's a lot of time saved there if you're better than me at doing that skip and also luckier than me when trying to get the black dumpling helm. I would say there's probably a good hour, um, depending on your luck of course when farming the helm, to save just purely on those two aspects alone. So again, bear that in mind with the final time. But as I mentioned, we've got literally all of the items that we need. All I needed to do was grab some last couple of smithing stone sixes, which again were located in the volcano manor, either on the rooftops or in this little, little magma cave where the giant enemies are residing. And again, there's a couple of drops which give you multiple smithing stone sixes, so that was great. Had more than enough runes from the amount of farming that I was doing on the Albinorex, so I was able to upgrade my weapon to plus 18 and was able to upgrade my strength to 40, which seemed to be more than enough in order to one-shot Morgit. So with everything pretty much ready to go, I made sure that we had our Wonder Physics stacked with the Strength Knot tier and the Spike Crack tier, made sure that we had the Ash of War, Royal Knight's Resolve on our Giant Crusher and a Dagger with Golden Val as well, equipped the black dumpling helm and gave ourselves frenzy to boost our damage once more with that infused ourselves with flame give me strength and drank the blood boil aromatic and with us just going past the four hour and 51 minute mark unleashed that lethal attack and <laughs> yeah I, I did all of that and still 
somehow didn't manage to one-shot Morgoth. So after having From Software laugh in my face, basically telling me my plus 18 Giant Crusher wasn't enough, um, I went back to Kaelid, grabbed a couple of Smithing Stone 7s, and then also went to go and defeat the Falling Star Beast in the Crystal Tunnel. So then I had enough to make it a plus 20 instead, used the remaining runes to make my strength 43 now, just for good measure, went back to Stormvale Castle, rinsed and repeat the process, looked at Morgoth in the eye for the final time and in just under five hours and five minutes I had successfully created a build that is capable of one-shotting bosses in the Elden Ring. Now this was incredibly fun to go out and try and do. Like I said at the very beginning I've seen so many videos featuring one-shot builds and always thought it was so tedious to get it all set up just literally to be able to defeat bosses in two seconds but in actual fact I had an absolute blast doing this and it's actually probably one of the most fun builds that I've ever put together so if you wanted to mimic this you're more than welcome to do so I'm also going to throw up on screen just sort of like the list of buffs that you get with each thing because I know I didn't really explain it too much as to why we got each item but essentially everything did play a part boosting our output quite a lot obviously the most significant ones being Royal Knights Resolve and of course the Blood Boil Aromatic is also quite fun exploring areas that you probably shouldn't do so early in the game so uh, I'd say definitely give this a go but either way I hope you enjoyed the slightly different style of video I know we typically just sort of talk about a build especially around about a level 150 character giving you all the information you need talismans you need and just assuming you've got everything there and then whereas we've taken a little bit of a dynamic in terms of like the speed running type videos starting off from scratch and creating an insane build so definitely let me know if you've enjoyed this kind of video by hitting that like button down below and whilst you're down if you wanted to leave a comment suggesting maybe a different type of build like I mentioned again at the beginning other weapons and spells like Comet Azure can also be used to do a similar thing so if you want Want me to try this with a different weapon or just different mechanic in the game altogether let me know in the comments below because i'm more than happy to take suggestions and see if i can obviously beat this time by doing a different build let me know as well if you've ever done this before yourself and let me know if you've beaten my time it's probably highly likely because there was a lot of opportunity for time saves um during my run but hey ho it's what makes the beauty of this video i guess and if you want to stick around for more elden ring content more insane builds and just new ways to experience Experience the game and keep it fun make sure that you're subscribed so you stay up to date with all of the latest content but for now I think that is more than enough from me <laughs> so I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope you're having an amazing day but uh, like I say for now I'll catch you in the next video of whatever it is that we make bye bye